Hello, I am Lissy from Family Strengths, and we are doing a series of interviews with early intervention providers in Los Alamos, in the Los Alamos area. Today, I have Ellen from Firstborn, and I'm going to ask a few questions about the Firstborn program. So thanks for coming, Ellen. Welcome. Um, so my first question is, how does Firstborn aid in early intervention? How that's a great that? that's a great question so in our home visiting program um we have a home vid visitor matched with a family uh with a first-time parent with baby from ages zero to three and one of our main goals is that babies are healthy and so we do um regular screening in all kinds of areas. One of the main ones that would, I think, be most relevant for early intervention is the ASQs, the Ages and Stages Questionnaire. And that tracks um, physical milestones as well as social and emotional milestones. And we do those at regular intervals starting at four months old. If, there, if baby um, is in the... Um, gray area, as it were, or, or even scores significantly below the, the cutoff, then we have a conversation with families about that and refer right away to early intervention. And we partner with Las Cumbres on that and, and the child's pediatrician. And we find that the earlier families avail themselves of those services, the better the outcomes. And usually the shorter the stay is even in early Absolutely. intervention. Sometimes within just a few months, a little bit of extra support in a developmental area will help that brain architecture develop that gets them over that hump of whatever the delay might be. And then they're just off and rolling, off and running on <laughs> those um, that normal path of development. Awesome. Typical path, I should say. Yes. <laughs> All the paths are a little bit different, but. Exactly. Exactly. And do any of, does your program cost any, or is there a cost for the families? No, our program is completely free. Um, all of our services are completely free. We um, typically families uh, join prenatally or in the baby's first two months. That's our program model. Um, if we have space, we can take outside of those parameters. We could take babies that are, are older or um, if it's not the first baby um, for, for both parents. Uh, and so it's completely free and um, families are eligible to stay up until baby turns three years old uh, with these, these home visits. That's spectacular. And so many changes happen from birth to three. It's, it's astounding. It's nice to have, yes, it have support all the way through. That kind of dovetailed into my next question, which was who is eligible for the program? Everyone that is a first time parent do it's, both parents have to be first time or? In our program right now, most are, but we have some that are not. And let me tell you what some of the sort of exceptions are. So it's a universally available program. As far as I know, no one's babies comes with the owner's manual. <laughs> um, and, and so each family has its unique set of strengths and unique set of uh, challenges and risk factors. And so everyone is eligible. And um, our, our program model says that we, we start families off either during the prenatal period or when up until baby turns two months old for first time parents. Well, there, here are some exceptions. If either parent is a first time parent, that counts. If there's been, if there are siblings, but they're much older, um, seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 years mm -hmm. older, 
that's like starting all over again, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> and so we'll, we'll um, uh, accept families in that position. If you're adopting, if you had your baby um, and baby ends up in NICU for weeks or months and passes that um, two month mark, that, that's okay. Um, once you're home with baby, that's sort of when that clock starts ticking yeah. when you're really parenting in a more typical environment. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, and then, like I said, if we have space in the program and you don't meet one of those, you meet those requirements for whatever, but you feel like you need some extra support, or if we have a partnering agency that is serving that family and sees a risk factor and thinks that that home visiting would be a good fit, we always do our best to get families in. And some families with their, their second or more child, it's one or two specific goals they want, they're want. they looking to meet. Like um, we've had families who breastfeeding first time around was really challenging and just not what they wanted. And they didn't want to go through that again. We have a lactation counselor and her services are free as well. And so we've had families that will just stay for maybe that first six months. Or um, it might be that once they start, it's like, well, I was only going to stay for a couple months to get help with breastfeeding. But <laughs> wow, this is amazing. I'm sticking with this. That's very cool. Um, what? So you have the home visitor and the lactation specialist. Are there any other um, services available? I didn't have that as one of my questions, actually, but it just came. <laughs> so, so we very much meet families where they're at. We are curriculum-based, uh, uh, research-based curriculum, and, and, and goal-oriented. And so one family might be working on basic needs, and they never signed up for food stamps or WIC, or um, they are housing insecure, um, looking to complete their education, and will assist in those areas in the context of parenting. Another family, um, it might be um, mental health challenges. Um, one of the parents has always struggled with anxiety, but now it's in spades with a new baby to worry <laughs> about. And so uh, helping them get those mental health supports they might need might be their top priority. And of course, goals change through those first three years. And, and so it's a really wide range of of um, goals that families have. And so in addition to the curriculum, the firstborn curriculum, there are other programs like Circle of Security that we have uh, almost all of our home visitors trained in uh, an attachment and attunement kind of curriculum. Mm -hmm. We have baby massage. We have wow. uh, one and soon two um, certified in that. And so, um, and then referral to resources in the community and helping to connect that with wonderful places like Family <laughs> Strengths Network or Las Cumbres or, or other, um, the community, the social services department of the county, um, different medical providers, day, helping families prioritize and figure out what their daycare uh, is going to look like. And so it, it, the program in a lot of ways is different for each and every family. That sounds, that sounds great. That sounds very awesome. Can you give me kind of a example of what a typical home visit might be like? What, what is, if someone's never been a part of it, what might their, their first visit be like? The first visit is pretty standard informational and, and really going over what the program entails, what, our commitments are what we expect families commitments are as far as engagement but from then on it's very individualized like i said but there's it does follow a pattern of there's a check in making you know, if we haven't done it already by text ahead of time or an email of what is it you'd like to focus on this week that check in loop following up on things that we talked about the previous visit um 
so that there's connection visit to visit mm -hmm. and so how did that go trying um, out that potty training technique that you decided <laughs> was going to be a good fit for your family um or how was it this past week with um returning from travel and from three time zones away and you were really worried <laughs> about that so so the check-in on whatever um it was and then um uh, making you know uh, uh sorry i'm losing my train of thought here um <laughs> Checking in about, well, we you texted me that you were really interested in exploring what is um, transitioning to some solid foods from, from exclusively breastfeeding to some baby led weaning. And, and you wanted to talk about that and you were confused about what that actually meant versus just introducing solids. So I've got this, here's the curriculum, here's a video we can watch together, here's um it and it really depends on the the parents mm -hmm. learning style and and what do you have, what are how are you feeling about this do you have concerns um so exploring the feelings around it exploring what might be best for your family and uh, we come at this very much from you the parents are the experts on your baby you're with them 24 7 <laughs> I'm I'm here alongside you on the journey and we explore things together, but it's not me, the expert, telling you what to do. Let's figure it out together and explore different options and try and see what works. And if that doesn't work, let's try something else. That's and if it's outside of my scope of practice, like, ooh, you're worried about allergies well, here are some signs, but that particular rash, mm, that looks like something the pediatrician should see. And so, or you know, really making sure that we stay within our scope of practice. That sounds, that sounds awesome. It sounds like, you know, first time parenthood can be so solitary if you don't have a community built. And so you guys have a are, are kind of helping form a built-in community and that Very is much spectacular. So. And, and um, we, found, we found, especially with babies born during the pandemic, oh it's, goodness, yes. it's been a real lifeline for families, especially ones who are so far away from their extended family, even halfway, yeah. halfway around the world away from. Yeah, um, that was my, and my last question was, how are things different during COVID? Um, what are our visitors still going to to houses or are you is it does it depend on the family's comfort levels and um a year ago and a couple of weeks <laughs> we went very swiftly to all virtual services and we are a HIPAA compliant um, program meaning that your everything you say your privacy is protected and just like at the doctor's office. And so we got um, the HIPAA compliant version of Zoom. And so we've done virtual visits since then. Some, sometimes it's a phone call, usually it's a Zoom visit. We do a lot of dropping stuff off <laughs> um, and porch, porch pickup kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, whether it's the gifts that come along the way or curriculum or loaning toys or books for the babies or books for the parents. Um, but we haven't gotten the go-ahead from the state early childhood education and care department, which are our main funders. We have not gotten the go-ahead yet for face-to-face uh, -face visits. I'm imagining it's going to be coming soon. And it's going to be very much on a case by case basis. Very soon, our whole staff will be completely vaccinated. Most already are. There's one or two who still have a little ways to go. And then it's going to be a discussion, I would imagine, with each family of what their comfort what level is. What comfort level is. And what are their practices and willingness to um, stay COVID safe. And so, but I don't think the virtual is going away because it has a lot of advantages. It really does. 
uh, parents are in California for three weeks with grandparents. Well, we can visit. We can always yeah, visit. You get to meet grandparents that way. <laughs> right, right. Or um, baby has the sniffles and is a little fussy. We might cancel a face-to-face -face visit that way because you know, the home visitor doesn't need to bring a cold home to her family. Yeah. But we can visit on Zoom. Fantastic. Well, I guess my only other question is then how, if, if a family sees this and decides they want to sign up, where do they, where do they go to sign up for Firstborn? So um, our website, firstbornla.org, there's a, a contact button that you can hit and then that goes straight to my email. And if you leave your name, phone number, email, what you're interested in, we'll get back to you within a day or so. Um, there's, um, that's probably the most direct. Um, awesome. I'll be sure and link that when I post this and link it in the, in all of our information about early child, early intervention for early childhood. Thank you so much, Alan. You're welcome. Any, Let's see. any last, anything you want to add? No, just at, at this moment, we do have spots. There's no waiting list. We've had, we've, we've seen um, a fair number of, of folks who, after this year of isolation, have decided I need to be closer to family and, and have moved out of town. And so um, we do have spots at the moment. Um, and even if we do end up with a waiting list, we're usually be able to get people off pretty quickly. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.